One thing that most people won't believe about Ireland is the types of cars that you might find on a random farmyard. And this farmyard is one of those. Wait till you see what's down here. So is this, the B7 RS4, one of Audi's most overhyped models? Well, we're here on a random farmyard in the southwest of Ireland, looking at an in yeah, incredible collection of cars, a very random collection of cars as well. And we're gonna talk you through all of those cars, including this RS4, and including what's down there, hiding in the corner, an R32 Nissan Skyline GTR. And you're watching another episode of Retrogarage, so please make sure to subscribe, like, share. It helps us get content like this out to a lot more people, and also means we can film more videos like this. There is a lot of people watching this video who are gonna skip straight to the R32 Skyline part of this video, but I do implore you, please hang on a little bit because while these Audis might seem quite understated, these are quite special cars. So the first of these cars is of course this B7 Audi RS4. These are powered by a 4.2 litre V8, putting out about 414 horsepower to all four wheels through the traditional Quattro Torsen based all wheel drive system. These things are amazing cars and they're sometimes quite overrated, sometimes quite underrated. But one of the things that whenever I talk about like even my Audis in terms of the way they handle and how far forward those engines are, well, this is the car that Jeremy Clarkson complained about Audis apparently handling badly because of how for far forward the engine is. That's because if you look under here, we have that 4.2 liter V8 and about here is where the top mounts sit. So you essentially have all eight cylinders right in front of those top mounts and, you know, hanging in front of the car. But to be honest, from my perspective and also the guy that owns this car, these things handle like they're on rails. So I don't know, maybe that criticism is a little bit unwarranted. And whenever I put up a video about these Audis, those comments about, you know, these understeering always come from people who drive diesel BMWs for some reason, even though my daily is a BMW and these Audis actually probably handle better than a lot of BMWs do. It's a big V8 motor. So some of the other special things about this B7 RS4 over the standard A4 or even S4 is of course you get those wider arches, you get these little vents in the bumper as well, you also get eight pot front brakes and when you look inside, you know obviously you have a gorgeous RS interior but you also have this sill that extends out a good bit further than the standard one would. I think the standard one would pretty much end here. So you have this kind of sill extension that makes the look of this car look a hell of a lot wider. Sitting inside here into this one, one of the great things about the B7 RS4, unlike some of the other RS models that came before and came after it, is that this comes with a six speed manual, which is the best combination to have with this car. Unlike a lot of other performance cars at the time, Audi for some reason decided to not bastardize this car and actually give it a manual, which, which is probably one of my favorite features of this car. Unfortunately, at the same time, the RS6 was automatic only, and I'm pretty sure every RS4 that came after this is automatic only as well. So yeah, long live the long live the six-speed manual. So one theme you're gonna see throughout all of the Audis that we're gonna show you today is one of my favorite things about the interiors of Audis, especially sporty Audis, is the carbon trim. So on this you have carbon trim here and a quattro badge over here. And you'll see that happen. Oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, you'll see that happen in pretty much all of the cars as well. Obviously around the back of the B7 RS4, you can just see how wide this thing is. And the one thing that makes this always stand out as a proper RS4, rather than all of the A4 two liter TDIs that are rebadged as RS4s, you have the twin oval exhaust and those wider arches in the back as well. Which brings us on to this car, which doesn't have wider arches. We go back in time a small bit then to 1999 because this here is a B5 Audi S4. This was the first generation of the S4 that was based on the A4. The previous generation S4 was actually similar to the S6s back there. It was actually a pre-facelift S6. So this, the S4, the B5 S4 is powered by one of the most iconic Audi engines. Maybe not the most iconic, but one of the most iconic Audi engines and that is the 2.7 
I'm gonna try not to break this now. The 2.7 V6 twin turbo. The look of this engine you might recognize as well from the B5 Audi RS4 because that also came with a 2.7 litre twin turbo. However, the one inside in the RS4 was actually tuned by Cosworth. This is the base one. This one here is pushing out about 300 horsepower and honestly, this thing sounds glorious. And one feature you're probably gonna see on quite a lot of Audis as well, big brakes. This one has the upgraded Porsche 18Z brakes on it with 350 mil discs. So pretty much the same setup that's on my Audi S6. Again, as we come into the interior, we have a lovely sporty Audi interior, including Audi RS formats, even though it's a bit of an up badge. So Jamie, please don't up badge your cars. Audis of this era just look so good from the inside. And you can see again, carbon trim, this time with a blue weave inside it. And you're gonna see more cars with blue weave in the carbon trim as well as we go further back this line. But again, Audis of this era just look so brilliant from the inside. And honestly, I don't think they get enough credit for what they should get. It's just how modern they feel and modern and timeless as well. The dash inside in the B5 Audi is one of my favorites. Again, you have that carbon weave that goes the whole way around. It's even on the back doors as well, the carbon with the blue weave inside in it. And honestly, yeah, these things look so good. Jamie in his S4 has as well a six speed manual, which is you kind of need to have in one. So I really want to get one for my car. So we will do that soon. I promise. So the B5 Audi A4 was the first generation of A4, but it actually wasn't the first generation of S4. Before the A4 came along, it was of course called the Audi 80, but the first generation S4 actually looked very similar to the S6s back there because the pre-facelift version of that car was actually called an S4. Now the B5 generation was also the first time that we ever heard of the RS4 name. So those cars were pretty much based on these S4s. The 2.7 twin turbo engine was sent away to Cosworth and they ended up extending extending the arches and a couple of other goodies. And you also got the kind of the vents here that we can also see on the B7 RS4. So they carry through to the B7 RS4. Now there is a generation missing because they never actually built a B6 generation RS4 for some reason. It went straight from B5 to B7. I made a small mention inside of the fact that there's Audi RS4 mats on the inside. I'm not a big fan of up badging, but at least the owner on the outside has down badged it to an Audi A4 1.6. Apparently he's gonna get a new boot, boot lid, maybe even a carbon boot lid for this soon. So don't mind that. He told me not to put it on camera, but look, it's a car, it happens. We all have old cars. These things happen to old cars. One thing that did change though, as we kind of went on the years, older performance Audi models always had twin exit exhaust on one side. And you even see this with other brands such as Mercedes, BMW. A lot of those performance models always had two tips on the one side to denote that they're slightly higher performance than the standard versions. So then we have two cars that don't look that special, at least this one didn't. I, I actually had the opportunity to buy this car because this car and that car pretty much came from the same owner. This here is an Audi S6 C4. Some of these actually even came with a version of the boot where you could flip up two back seats and basically have two rear facing children in the back of your five cylinder turbo group B engine powered um, Audi Estate, which uh, again, I don't know if I'd like to do that nowadays uh, with you know safety and everything, but it was the 90s. People didn't care that much. The inside of this S6, again, looks very familiar to my one. Again, you have the carbon trim with the blue weave as we saw in the S4 as well. And you have that massive dash that goes the whole way across. But this does have something that my car does not, which is a clutch pedal and a six speed manual gearbox. So I guess that brings us on to that which is my car. We're not gonna talk about this car too much because this of course is my Audi S64. There are so many videos about this on the channel. Five cylinder turbo, automatic at the moment, but it is being swapped to manual, which is gonna be on the Retroguard YouTube channel and TikTok and Instagram over the next few weeks. This is Jamie's one, the owner of all these other cars that we've seen. And I just decided to kind of put these two down in the corner together because in this, we again have the same five cylinder turbo engine and also sporting the uh, R8 coil packs. Funny story for anyone that remembers what happened after I drove to Driftmasters in Mandela Park way earlier in the year, my alternator broke. So this car ended up being my alternator donor for a while. And uh, yeah, I somehow managed to break this alternator as well. So I learned a few lessons about putting in and taking out Audi alternators in the process because of 
well, pretty much because of this car. The owner actually bought this with another Donor S6, and that car still has the manual um, drive shaft, prop shaft, all of that. So I've bought all of those parts for my Audi S6 swap, and I'm gonna take note of some of the other bits such a, that I might need, such as the styles of cups, etc., for the drive shafts as well. This car and that car both lived in the same lineup. My one, of course, was the Ugly Duckling because it had an automatic and nobody wanted it, so I decided to buy it. But, in hindsight, I'm thankful I did because look at those lovely clean wings. Actually, do you know what? That was a bit silly of me pointing them out, I think. Just, he told me not, he told me to not show off any of the rust, but Jamie, I'm sorry. I, I love how understated this car is though, because at the end of the day, look, we're on a farm. This looks like a farmer's car. And I think Jamie kind of really likes that kind of look about it too. The fact that it could be just any farmer's car with no badges on it, but has a five cylinder turbo, basically group B engine under the bonnet, which is, yeah, cool. And it's a petrol five cylinder turbo. It's not a diesel, it's a petrol. But you know what? I always wanted an Avant. The saloon has just really grown on me. But seeing the Avant here, I don't know, let me know in the comments, should I have got a Avant one of these instead of the saloon or do you think the saloon looks nicer? And then we have the car that most of you guys are probably waiting for, the R32 Nissan Skyline GTR on this farmyard. Also owned by the same guy that owns pretty much all of the other cars you've seen today. And I'm guessing most of you are interested in this because, well, not that many people on the internet are as big fanboys of old school Audis as me and Jamie, the owner, are. And of course it starts raining because Ireland, so do you want to just, we'll take a... As is characteristic for Ireland, it poured rain for like 20 minutes and now it's sunny again. So yeah, we didn't get a chance to film the rest of the video in the sun, but now for the nicest car of all, the R32 Skyline, we get to actually film it in the sun. The one thing that is uncharacteristic for this car is actually being outside in the rain because uh, like a lot of Japanese cars, they don't seem to like rain that much for some reason, I don't. JDM car owners seem to like having JDM cars inside, whereas all of the Audis are pretty much all galvanized chassis anyway. Personally, the R32 GTR is my favorite generation of Skyline. And usually I really like these when they come with that kind of like gray graphite color. Seeing this one in white really stands out among the crowd. Pretty much, you know, most R32 Skylines you see are that kind of a gray color. This one here came from Japan quite a few years ago and it's maintained quite a kind of, you know, unmodified, unmolested look about it. It's sitting on a set of Volk Racing TE37 SLs, which are probably the, one of the nicest wheels for any JDM car. I know there's been a bit of a backlash against them because people really like them. They've become basically the Mark IV Supra of wheels. I think it's justified these wheels are gorgeous. But it is sitting on a lovely set of made in Germany Michelin Pilot Sport 5s, which isn't very natural for a JDM car. And behind those TE37s, we have R32 GTR V-Spec brakes there as well, the Brembo caliper. On any white car from Japan, usually you see quite a bit of rust poking through. And like we've talked about rust on some of the other cars, the Audis, this is pretty much as clean as it gets. I haven't seen any rust on this whatsoever. Usually you would somewhere in the wheel arches. Sometimes, you know, any white car, see a lot of Mitsubishi Evos, GTRs, Skylines. They often rust around here, around the wings and places, but yeah. This, for, for a white car, this is incredibly clean. On the inside then, we have uh, lovely seat covers because again, this car is on a farm and it is used on a farm. <laughs> no? On the inside then, we have, well, no steering wheel because that's sitting over here and we'll, we'll see, can we, is this the one that does the nice like bing sound? Wait, this is gonna be the ASMR part of the video. By my hesitation, you can see that I don't really use Japanese cars that much. Uh, it needs to have a little bit of a bell, the TikTok thing. Inside then, again, pretty much everything stock. Five-speed manual gearbox. One thing I find wild about old-school JDM cars is just how far away the dash is and yeah, like there's no airbags here, nothing. And when I sat in the passenger seat of this car for the first time, it was one thing that kind of really 
like the dash is so far away whereas the dash in many Audis is kind of like it's close to you it's it's coming towards you inside in the dash then you can see that this only has 72,000 kilometers down on it and as you can see here on the clocks this has the 180 kilometer per hour clocks rather than the 260 or 300 kilometer per hour aftermarket clocks you could get that's because Japan at the time wanted to cut back on the amounts of injuries and deaths occurring on their roads they tried to impose somewhat of a speed limit on car manufacturers by not allowing to them to read over 180 kilometers per hour and also created the gentleman's agreement of 276 horsepower across all of the manufacturers at the time so this car has 276 horsepower according to the manufacturer even though they were measured to have quite a bit more and in typical JDM car fashion as is popular from the time of you know Fast and the Furious and the tuner scene we have this lovely greddy turbo boost gauge something that's become somewhat of an oddity nowadays in modern performance cars. It wouldn't be a GTR if it wasn't for this engine right here. This is the RB26 engine. This engine pretty much in its base form carried through all the way from the R32 GTR through the R34 GTR as well. They were all variations of the RB26. One thing that I always found really special about these RB26 engines in the R32 is the fact that they are on independent throttle bodies. That's because the Skyline GTR was made to homologate the race cars for the Touring Car Championships in Japan at the time. So that's why you see that individual throttle body. It's similar enough to the way that the Sierra Cosworths for Touring Car Championships included a extra set of injectors. In terms of modifications, again, this is probably one of the more standard Skylines you're going to see on the internet. It does have a couple of tasty little bits, such as these M's or M's, M's, I don't know how to pronounce it. Air filters here, which are, are they cast? That is crazy. I've never seen cast air filter housings, but uh, interesting. And it also has a oil filter relocation, which you see a lot of the time on RBs because usually the oil filter is in down here. So most lads relocate them to up here. However, this oil filter is actually relocated down there behind the fan. So essentially, if you jack this car up, you probably won't be able to see it on camera, but if you jack this car up, it's essentially at the bottom and front of the engine rather than having to kind of force your hand in here and possibly taking off stuff like the intake manifold fold um, don't know why it's relocated down here rather than up here but maybe it's just old school Japan things and it also has a Tomei brake master cylinder stopper in it as well which apparently has made the way this the braking on this feels quite a lot different as well other bits that kind of make the GTR iconic over the GTST for example are of course the wider arches in the front but also the back. The fact that this grille section is also separate to the bonnet, I think on the GTSTs and most of the other Skylines, the essentially where that grille would be is just one piece that goes here. And it also has these N1 vents and N1 headlights on it as well. So as mentioned before, you have these wider arches in the back as well. Usually the kind of the standard Skylines, including the GTST, would kind of drop down a lot more here. And I just love these things. It's just a shame that they've gone to the price that they have because I'd love to pick one up. Even if it was a GTST, I'd love to get an R32 Skyline. I'm in the camp of really liking the R32 Skyline. The R34 GTR is a gorgeous car, but for me, look, you're getting pretty much the same engine. And as you might expect, R32 GTR, you get the four wheel drive with the high cast system in the back as well. And one of the wildest things about this car is it's probably one of the, probably one of the only R32 Skylines I've ever come across that actually still has the high cast installed and doesn't have it disabled. And if you don't know what high cast was, essentially it was Nissan's version of trying to figure out how to do rear wheel steering. And one of my favorite features of R32 Skylines though is these tail lights here with those kind of glowing rings. This has become a look that has become synonymous with pretty much every generation of GTR since. I think even the R31 Skylines had it as well and everything up until the R35 GTR has some variation of a kind of a twin ring for the rear taillights and you can tell that this car was made to be essentially a race car because you have two exposed tow rings or tow eyes on the back which uh, again you don't see that much on cars nowadays usually they're all covered up but I'm guessing this has something to do with the fact that 
this was meant to be a race car. So that's been our tour of some of the cars here in this random farm shed in the southwest of Ireland. Big thank you to the owner, Jamie, for letting us have a look at all of these cars. And a big thank you to Oscar behind the camera giving me a hand today. And he's on Instagram, at OXGFX, so make sure to check him out there. And who knows, we might get him behind the camera another time again. But let me know, which of these cars would you choose? Would you choose the R32 Skyline, the B5 S4, the Audi RS4 B7, or one of the S6s, maybe the Avant or my Saloon. We are gonna come back another time because there's a couple of other cars around here that we haven't got the chance to film today. And also, if you do enjoy this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. It's stuff like sharing this video with at least one person who you think might enjoy it that really helps us grow this community of people that just love old school cars and allows us to make more videos like this. And if you have a couple of cool cars that you wanna have filmed, email me, Aaron at RetroGarage.ie. And also check out RetroGarage.ie for any press number plates, stickers, or merch, such as these hoodies, the key rings, etc., and also for Rotoform wheels, KW suspension, and BC racing suspension, and a few other nice bits on the website as well. And also, I have limited spaces for anyone looking for marketing consulting. So if you have a business and are looking to grow or expand that business, again, just drop me an email, Aaron at RetroGarage.ie, and we'll see what we can do. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you, as always, in the next video. Take care. <laughs> Is this my Uber for Aaron? So Jamie has offered to give me a lift to my car. Oh, look at that. Yeah, not, that's not bad. Quality. Purr. And there's my car. Jamie, this is definitely the S6 I should have bought off Ronan. You should have had, and I should have had yours, only I didn't buy yours because it had an automatic and I didn't want the hassle of swapping it. And haven't I happy I bought the automatic one now? Yeah, because it's a way nicer car. You and I have to do half the work to swap my manual in anyway. Yeah. And well, taking, all, the work anyway. taking all of the bits out of your donor car. I don't know, all the same work anyway. Don't, so I don't just, cry. I don't. should have just bought yours.